Hello and welcome to Just Hoops. Kawhi Leonard is one of the most unstoppable forces in basketball, but how do you slow him down? We're going to try to answer that question in this video. So to first look at his stats, he's averaging 24 points per game, 6 rebounds, 4 assists this season, but in his last 15 games, he's averaging 27 points, 6.5 rebounds, 3.8 assists, 1.7 steals, shooting 55.5 from the field, and 53.8 from 3. Now to dive more into his shooting, breakdown, and shot profile, 52% of his shots are coming from the mid-range. He's in the 92nd percentile in terms of his shooting percentage from the mid-range, and 21.4% of his points come from the second level, and 19.7% of the points come from the free throw line. You can see here with his shot chart that he does work the middle third of the floor, really tries to get in the middle, and he's a very strong right-hand player trying to get to the right side of the floor and get his shots from there. But at the end of the day, just the way that he is able to score at all three levels, be a physical force, and have the skill to score regardless of how the defense is playing him is definitely what makes him so hard to guard. But now let's dive into the film and see what we can come up with in ways to slow down this unstoppable force. First thing we're going to talk about is Kawhi in isolation situations. He is averaging 1.056 point per possession on 47.3% field goal percentage, 52.3% effective field goal percentage, 55.9 true shooting percentage, and including passes, it's 1.113 point per possession. Now to look at this from more of a tendency standpoint, if he sees a one-on-one -on -one matchup and you do not show help and show bodies, he's going to take that all day long and try to find angles to attack. Primarily, he likes working the middle third of the floor, regardless if it's from beyond the arc or in the paint. He likes getting to the middle of the floor, but if he can't, he's going to try to go to his right hand, try to work the right side of the floor and make plays over there like he's doing right here against Shea Gilgis of the Oklahoma City Thunder, getting to his right hand, getting to the baseline jumper. Here against the Knicks, he's going to get into the middle of the floor and make a play out of there. Just the way that he's able to use his size and strength to get to wherever he wants to get on the floor. And if you do not show help, he is going to attack a one-on-one -on -one matchup all day long. I think the time that you can limit him being in these island situations is going to be major, but we'll dive into that more. At the end of the day, if you show him one body while also allowing him get to his right hand or to the middle of the floor, it's curtains for your defense. Now to talk about the defensive side of these one-on-one -on -one situations with Kawhi, I think we're going to talk about the primary defender first. I think being on Kawhi Leonard as an individual matchup, first you have to stay connected. Secondly, I think you have to play cat and mouse. You have to take away drives. You can't allow him to get layups and free throws and allow him to get going. So you have to deter him from getting paint, getting drives, and you have to force these mid-range shots. I'd like matchup wise to have somebody more with size, like even Drew Eubanks there having the size to stay in front a little bit and also contest the shot. OG Ananobi here is sitting down. He's definitely playing the drive first, but you have to be able to recover out like he does in this clip and get a contest on the shot. Just taking away the ability for him to drive, playing cat and mouse with him a little bit so he can't necessarily decide is going to be major in being successful against him. Secondly, in terms of everyone else, you have to load the strong side early and show him bodies. In that clip there, you saw the block and nail were loaded, preventing driving. Here, the Portland Trailblazers do an awesome job. Damian Lillard is loading the strong side block. The top side is loaded, and then you have Nurk floating the middle of the floor. The Dubs did a great job at loading the strong side and also pushing him to a side of the floor in terms of guarding at the first level. Just loading up, keeping him on a side is going to be major in being successful. In this clip here against the Thunder, you're going to have Shea sitting on him, forcing him to the baseline. Isaiah Joe is going to be on the block, loading that strong side up. Everyone else is staying home because that's how their defense goes, but that strong side load is going to be necessary in slowing down Kawhi Leonard to prevent rim touches and force a lot of tough twos in the mid-range. Here against the Grizzlies, you'll see another style of loading up that they do at the gap and nail area. They're going to force him to the left and load the middle of the floor to prevent driving angles from there. But at the end of the day, I think that this clip here against Denver shows that you want to keep him out of the middle of the floor. They're going to blitz from the middle, try to keep him on the side, and not allow him to get easy shots in that middle third they really likes trying to work. 
Now to change things up and talk about Kawhi in the pick and roll, this is his highest volume play type where over 22% of his possessions are in the pick and roll. He's averaging 1.199 point per possession, 1.153 point per possession plus passes. Him alone in pick and roll situations is shooting 55.8% from the field and 66% true shooting. I think a lot of the same tendencies apply to Kawhi in the pick and roll. He likes getting to his right hand and he likes trying to get to the middle of the floor. If you also go in drop situations, he's killing you in those. If you're not staying connected to him and playing him like that, he's going to be able to get to his spots, get downhill and make plays happen. And if you give him any space at all in the pick and roll, he's going to just get to wherever he wants to be, gets his feet down and makes plays happen time and time again. Staying connected and just having presence in the pick and roll is a major thing. And you can see in a lot of these clips that drops, unders, if you get caught on the screen, all get killed by him on the nightly. So to start things with the defense side of things, I think at the point you have to force him to a side, keep him on the side of the floor, whether it's downing, weaking, icing, whatever you got to do at the point to keep him pinned to his side and prevent him getting near the middle of the floor is first things first. Herb did a great job there. And this clip against the Warriors, you can see Kaminga from the jump denies that 77 attack and puts him on the side of the floor, makes him go to his left. Draymond does a good job in help and forces the miss. This is another example here against the Knicks where they pin him to the side don't allow him to work that middle and then here against the Raptors you're going to see a weak coverage they're trying to get the ball in his left hand they're getting up into him Siakam's doing a great job at preventing him getting back to his right they're up pretty high in the coverage and they do a good job at loading behind and then blocking the shot this clip here we're going to see both the force of direction and then also you're going to see this loading of the paint so they switch the ball screen, but Draymond Green is loading the strong side on the floor and is the key to getting this stop and forcing the tough shot. This clip here against the Knicks, we're going to see a full loading of the floor with Kawhi after the ball screen. Josh Hart does a great job at positioning himself on the strong side of the floor. Hartenstein is active in the gap. They're just showing him bodies and really loading up. And then the next step to this in the pick and roll itself is the big man in coverage. I think that the more you're able to put a guy at the level or just below the level of the screen to just show presence and have multiple bodies at the force at the point of attack is just going to make it difficult. Gobert does a good job here, not necessarily being at the level, but he's playing cat and mouse in that drop, making Kawhi think and make decisions, and it's hard for him to do so. This clip here against Denver, we're going to have Jokic in a show and forcing the turnover. The more you're able to put presence at the ball, make him make decisions with pressure on him, I think is better for you as a defense and can really make plays happen or just get the ball out of his hands. At the end of the day, though, you always have to have presence on him. This here, the screen kind of broke them down. Fred Van Vliet had a switch, and then there was a peel switch to get size on him with Podal. I think that they did a great job here just keeping somebody on Kawhi and making it difficult. So at the end of the day, how do you guard Kawhi Leonard? You don't necessarily, but I think the more you're able to keep it out of his right hand, keep him out of the middle of the floor, it's going to be good for you. Just having presence on him, showing him bodies, and just making it as difficult as possible on every time down the floor. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, learned something about Kawhi and defense in the NBA. For more content like this, please like, subscribe, and share, and we'll catch you in the next one.